Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader of Our Savior Lutheran Church in beautiful West Lafayette, Indiana. We are so happy that you are here today. I do want to apologize for the mask. Um, After the last 48 hours and two negative COVID tests, I just know it's a cold, but I'm just being precautious and wearing this mask today for you all. And I've also asked um, our Faith Formation Director, Dale Beatner, to um, preside over communion, so I'm not sharing any other things than God's love um, during our meal today. So, um, and as you can see too, we have a little bit of different setup here this morning and that will become more clear to you as um, the service goes on. But this is going to be a participatory, maybe experiential worship service for you this morning. Um, as well as you at home. I had put some instructions with the Zoom invite, so hopefully you got those, and if you wanted to participate, you got those items as well. It's been a week. It's been a long week. So let us please rise as we begin our worship with a call to worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I tell you this. It is a wonderful thing when members of our family live together in love and peace. They shall be like trees planted beside flowing rivers. May the church be one, just as Christ and God are one, that Christ may be glorified in us. They shall yield good fruit in this season, and their leaf shall never wither. The grace, mercy, and peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all and also with you. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Forgive us, O God, when we treat people as though they are just a nuisance, when we are annoyed with others' behavior, when people unexpectedly assert themselves when we find it difficult to include those who think or act differently from the norm, when we are cruel on our judgments or exclusion. Forgive us, O God, when we do not hear or heed Jesus' prayer for unity. We pray for all who exploit their workers for profit. We pray for all who experience exploitation and fear of helplessness. O not to the ways in which we can encourage justice. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By by grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Will you please join us in singing verses 1, 2, and 3 of Rise, O Son of Righteousness, found in our red hymnal, hymn number 657.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we say that we want you to come and be among us, and yet we acknowledge that you already are among us, fully and completely at all times. We say that we want Jesus to return, and we pray, come Lord Jesus, and yet we confess our fears and uncertainty about the return of Christ and what it will mean for us and for the world. Jesus prayed that we might be one with you and with each other. And yet so often, if we are honest, we wish to remain separate from you, maintaining our independence and control. We resist the burden of being unified with those around us, especially when those around us want different things than we do or pull us in different directions we do not wish to go. Soften our resistance, gracious Lord, and draw us into an authentic relationship with you and true community with one another. We pray this in your name, in the name of your Son, who prayed and still prays for us. Amen.
You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are of advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fashioned their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and, the, and saw the prison doors open wide. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the, spirit, the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Be uh, before we start, I just want to let you know that there's something in the church that I am allergic to. Uh, if you remember last week, I was wheezing and coughing. Well, I'm wheezing again, so if I break into a coughing fit, keep reading. <laughs> uh, we'll read Psalm 97 together. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Cloud and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are all the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries with every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast are worthless idols. All gods that bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad. And the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. 
He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A reading from the book of Revelation, the 22nd chapter. The ascended Christ, hidden from our sight, promises to come again. We eagerly pray, come Lord Jesus, with all who respond to this invitation. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things say, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory, Glory to, you. to you, O Lord. Jesus continued to pray. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me, where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I don't see any children here with us this morning, but let me check on Zoom and see if there's any children out there on Zoom world. And if not, you guys have to suffer through my children's sermon. <laughs> Yay? You do anyway, that's right, regardless. Mike, I'll just stay up here if that's all right. Camera-wise, awesome. All right, so today we uh, hear about John's wonderful description. John is so eloquent with his writing, but sometimes it's just confusing. You and me and I and them and us and together. So I just thought I'd make it simple. Took three pieces of rope, tied them together. Now we are one. We are one. 
like Jesus is saying that God is one. But some of you might be a little skeptical. Pastor, it's not really one piece of rope because you tied them together. It's still three pieces of rope. But yet, that's the miracle of, of love and, and of God. Because the things that we think we see, the stuff that separates us, our sin, our disagreements, they are all just fictitious. They're not what's real. Because what God does is makes us one through the forgiveness of sin, the love for one another, and the love that God sheds on us. And you're like, well, pastor, you just tied those three knots onto the one piece of rope. That's right, I did. But how often do we believe the lies that our society continues to tell us? We are truly just one in God's love. We are the body of Christ. We don't need to believe any of the facade, any of the lies, any of the things that our culture tells us because we are one in God's love forever and always. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you are awesome and we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to speak of your love and the oneness that you propose to us. Help us to remember that we are to share that oneness. We are to share that love with all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ to you this day and always. So this past Monday, as I read through today's gospel, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Some of you know and some of you may not. We've been offered to buy two pieces of property in between PLM and Our Savior Lutheran Church. It's something that the church has been wanting to do for quite some time. And now we have the opportunity to do that. And we have to come together as one as a church to make that decision. This is what Jesus is praying for his disciples, to be one. And so that people, even in the future, that hear the word of the disciples, they may be one as well. I'm like, man, this sermon's going to write itself. And then we had this incident on Tuesday. The news of yet another mass shooting that took place. And in all places, an elementary school. Where we know now that 19 children are dead, along with two teachers, and the shooter, and his grandmother. We still haven't really figured out everything from the last mass shooting, this racist motivated mass shooting in Buffalo, New York that killed 10 people on May 15th. It's only May 29th. That was 15 days ago. There, those 10 people, Roberta, age 32, Margus, age 52, Andre, age 53, Aaron, age 55, Geraldine, age 62, Celestine, age 65, Haywood, age 67, Catherine, age 72, Pearl, age 77, Ruth, age six, or 86, Zaire, age 20, Jennifer, age 50, and Christopher, age 55, were all gunned down by somebody who just wanted to to get rid of people who were not like him. And now there are 19 dead children, ages 9, 10, and 11, whose greatest crimes were to go into school. McKenna, age 10. Layla, age 11. Miranda, age 11. Nevaeh, age 10. Jose, age 10. Xavier, age 10. Tess, age 10, Raleo, age 10, Ellie, age 9, Eliana, age 10, Annabelle, age 10, Jackie, age 9, JC, age 10, Matea, age 10, Jayla, age 10, Amari, age 10, Lexi, age 10. Alethea, age 10. 
and two teachers, Irma, age 48, and Eva, age 44. As your pastor, I am struggling to think of some good news to share as these world events continue to unravel. What can I say that will bring us together as one around this tragic news? Anything I can say just seems to fall short of understanding why these mass shootings keep happening. I'm sure we are feeling some of the same emotions, sadness, despair. We're miserable. We're heartbroken. And maybe like you, or maybe you're like me and starting to get angry, enraged that these mass shootings take place. I ask myself, what can we do considering all this? What can I do as your spiritual guide in this chaos and bewilderment? So I turned back to the scripture. In John 17, Jesus looks to heaven and begins to pray. He first prays for himself. He looks up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Then he prays for his disciples later on. Verse 17, sanctify them, the disciples, in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify them, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. And then Jesus prays for those who will come to believe. We heard this morning, verse 20, I ask not only on behalf of these, but on behalf of those who believe in me through their, the disciples' word that they, those yet to come, like us, may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. What is it that brings us together as one? Of course, God does this. Now, what's that mean for us? How do we remember that we are all one in God when the world seems to be forgetting that God made us to be in relationship with God and with one another? Not to kill one another, to be in relationship with one another. So the only thing I can offer you today, because times like this, my soul gets dry too. Is to pray. The only thing I can offer to you, like Jesus, pray for ourselves, pray for our community, those closest to us, and pray for those we don't know, but whom we know are hurting. We pray for all those who are looking for answers in the midst of deep hurt and despair. So today, that's why we have these prayer stations set up in the sanctuary. Each one of these prayer stations I invite you to come to If this is totally out of your um, experience and out of your comfort zone, I understand. God bless you. You may pray right where you're at. But I invite you to try to step into something that's a little bit different than what you're normally used to. Because these times when children are killing children, we need to do something a little bit different that's outside of our comfort zone. We need to start, I really don't know what, other than start doing something different, because what we're doing currently is not working. So please, as you are able, I invite you to go to each of these prayer stations. There are instruction sheets on each one of them. They are simple tasks, but that can open your mind to praying for people maybe in a different way. As those of you in the congregation are doing that, I'm going to walk through those of you online with the items I asked you to to get. Um, Our wonderful Sandra Vanna is gonna play something softly in the background as, as this goes on. And after we are done going through these, I'll ask you back into your seats, or once I see everybody in your seats, I'll continue with the rest of the service. Sandra, please.
as those who wish to get up and move around the sanctuary to each table, I go ahead and encourage you to do that. Those of you at home, I ask you to grab the piece of paper that um, I asked you to get. And here, take a few moments to pause and think about the guilt and shame we feel individually or communally. Maybe you feel guilty or shame about political unrest and polarity within the country or even your family. Maybe you feel shame of living peacefully as nations are at war. Maybe you feel guilty because you cannot do enough for those who are in need or in need of protection. Maybe you hold guilt or shame for some other reason. God knows your heart and hears your sorrow. Take a moment to give space for the Holy Spirit to open your heart in vulnerability. Then take a moment and write on the paper what is causing your guilt or shame. As you finish, fold that piece of paper up. You can either tear it up, or if you're brave enough and have the utensils there, you can burn it, because God's love is the refining fire that burns away all that guilt. God rips up our sin and our shame and washes us clean. As you finish up with the paper, I ask you to grab the fabric or the cloth. Here, take a few moments to pause and think about someone you would like to lift in prayer. Maybe it's a loved one, or maybe someone you know who is in despair. Maybe it is the community or family, the families who are reeling in New York or Texas after the mass shootings. Maybe it's those who are experiencing displacement in Ukraine or other countries as their homes are affected by war or violence. Maybe it's those adjusting to our post-COVID reality after the loss of a loved one or one lost to COVID. I ask you to take a moment for the Holy Spirit to place a person or community in your heart for whom to pray. Then take a few seconds and write that person's name or the community's name on the fabric. You can take that fabric and tie it somewhere outside so people can see it and the Holy Spirit can blow through it. Or you can bring it to church and we'll add it to those that are here and we will hang them up outside so again the wind and the Holy Spirit can blow through them and maybe enlighten somebody else to pray for those as well. And you're finishing up the fabric or cloth. I'll ask you to take the rock that I asked you to, to get and pick that rock up and then feel the weight of it. Take a few moments to pause and think about what is weighing you down. Maybe it's the awareness of the grief, stress, anxiety, depression, or uncertainty we are experiencing in this time. Maybe it's the burden of illness or the illness of a loved one. Maybe it's the injustice of young lives taken and families devastated in mass shootings. Maybe it's the war in Ukraine or the war on our planet known as climate change. 
you know what weighs you down. And so does God. Take a few seconds and write what is weighing on you on the rock and then lay it at the foot of the altar. God will take it. You do not have to carry it alone. Jesus is with you and walking with you every step of the way. I know you may not have an altar in your place, but at your home, find some place that's sacred to you. God's present there as well. As you finish up with that, I ask you to put in front of you the candle that I asked you to get. In John chapter 9, verse 5, it says, As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world, Jesus says. Here, take a few moments to pause and think about who needs the light of Christ to bring hope. Maybe it's you or a loved one. Maybe it's someone in Texas or New York. Maybe it's someone in a war-torn country. Maybe it's the world in general right now. Take a few seconds and light the candle and then place it somewhere in your house that you will notice it. It is the light of Christ as it is always burning with love, mercy, and grace to shine in the brokenness and the darkness of despair. God's light will always be here. Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to try something different, something new. We continue to pray for a broken world in light of the love of Christ that unites us all. Amen.
As you are able, you please stand and join us in singing Hallelujah, Sing to Jesus. Verses 1, 2, and 5, found in our red hymnal, hymn number 392. your mic and then I'll it's okay you please join me as we profess our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of, of your peace. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry, especially Candy, Jason, Phil, Shirley, and Eric, Rosalie, Jeff, Denise, Janet, Helmut, Carol, Richard, and Carly, Kim, Victoria, J Jennifer, Jeanette, Suzanne, Mike, Shelby, Eric, Joan, Jill, David, Gary, Kevin, Olga, Nikolai, Yelena, Yuri, Nancy, Anne, Mary, Sean, Phil, Lawrence, and Robert. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith, we pray. Make, make us, make us instruments, instruments of your peace. peace. God, giver of life, you intend for humans to live together in peace. In this time of grief over gun violence, we pray for your presence among us, that trusting in your mighty and gentle healing, we may live in hope. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. God of resurrection, we remember before you those who have died in Uvalda, Texas, we commend them to your, your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who are wounded or traumatized, and restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence. That we may serve as your arms of care to those in distress, we pray. Make, Make us, us instruments, instruments of your, your peace. peace. God of righteousness, you have laid on our elected leaders the responsibility to protect our land, strengthen their devotion to our common life, and guide legislators to enact policies that address our plague of gun violence, that our government may support our search for domestic harmony. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. peace. God of compassion, we give thanks for first responders, for police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and, offer, and all who offer compassionate aid in situations of tragedy. Keep them safe from harm and give them courage and sound judgment as they act, that we may join in support of those who risk their lives for others. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. peace. God of forgiveness, we ask your mercy on those who fired the weapon. With your grace, transform those who from malice or illness inflict violence on others. Console their families, believing in your power to make all things new. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. God of the promise in word and sacrament, we pray for the church. Give us a voice, your voice, to plead for a society marked by justice and sustained by cooperation among diverse peoples. Train us to resist the lure of brute force, that by your spirit we may become words and signs of your mercy, we pray. Make, make us, us instruments, instruments of, of your peace. peace.
God of true might and redemptive mercy, receive our prayers and grant us to become your instruments of peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment and share that peace with others. Peace be with you at home as well as all those here. Peace be with you. As we continue with our offering, Dale, I'll ask you to come on up. Um, and then also, just a word of thanks. You may be seated. A word of thanks for all that you do and continue to do. A reminder, after service, we will have discussion and fact-finding information about the property next door. It's because of you that we are able to do so much within our community and for the church, for the greater church. Um, we thank you for bringing in your um, tithes and continue to ask you to, to drop them off at the office or use the QR code on, on the screen. It's because of you that we are able to do so much. And for that, we are deeply appreciative of all that you uh, contribute of your time, service, and talents. And now we will begin with our offering prayer. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. And praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. And praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, again after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Come Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God. Blessed Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So come to this table, which now extends into our homes. You who have faith, and you who would like to have faith. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here for a long, long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come to this table. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. You may be seated. As we partake this morning, I will first serve uh, those who are, uh, who are serving and those who are up here at the altar. And then I will uh, extend a communing invitation to those who are at home uh, partaking over Zoom, as well as to those who wish to partake in their seats with the uh, prepackaged communion. And then I'll extend an invitation to those who wish to come forward. Let us now commune together as we celebrate this feast of Christ. To those who wish to commune in your pews, we invite you to partake of the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And now the wine or the juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink in remembrance of him. And now we invite those of you who wish to come forward. Just a brief reminder, if you, uh, if you do uh, require gluten-free bread, we do have uh, gluten-free wafers here, so when you come forward, you can simply request those, and whoever is serving will, uh, will grab those. Also, um, the in inner ring of cups contains grape juice, um, and so if you require grape juice, those are on the inner ring. May we partake together. We are. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives we may all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would just like to make the quick announcement of after service finishes up, we will gather down the fellowship hall. Give us a minute if you're online um, to get the owl set up, which is our video camera down there. And uh, then we will begin our discussion of um, the fact finding that from the financial team, but also um, a brief word from the council, and then um, answer questions that uh, you might have. Um, once again, thank you for all that you do, continue to do. Will you please stand at this time as we continue our worship and singing Son of God, Eternal Savior, verses 1, 3, and 4, hymn number 655. Thank mm -hmm. you. receive this blessing. My fellow servants, we are one. The bread we share makes us one. The cup we pour makes us one. Even as our dearest sisters and brothers come and go from us, we are one. Even as we scatter from this place to so many diverse pursuits throughout the city, the state, 
this globe, we are one. With gratitude, we share the table. With gratitude, we depart. With gratitude, we release one another, trusting in the one who makes us one. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Um, one more final word. We will have our meeting this afternoon, or this right after the meeting, right after worship. We will also have another information um, meeting on Wednesday, June 1st. That will be uh, hold via Zoom as well as in person, so a hybrid, uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday, June 1st. And then a week from today, we will have a congregational meeting to figure out first steps in whatever process we decide. Um, also on June 5th, we have a family game night. So keep that on your calendar as well. There will be pizza. There will be pizza. Five o'clock, five o'clock here, uh, uh, June 5th. Um, and now we're ready for our dismissal. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go, Go in peace. Tell, tell what God, God has done. Thanks be to God. Amen.